everybody and welcome to the Fashion Bunker Moschino Circus. This is a backdrop of, um, it's a silk scarf by Franco Moschino from back in the day when he was still alive. Unfortunately, he passed away in 1994 due to complications connected with HIV. But we will celebrate his legacy today and we're going to enjoy the review of the current formulation of Cheap and Chic by Moschino with the comparison to the original, or let's say the first release, the vintage version, by now we could call it vintage because it is over 20 years old, Cheap and Chic Moschino Eau de Toilette. Both are Eau de Toilette concentrations. This is a splash. This is a spray. Before we continue, I would like to say thank you to my patrons for helping support the channel. You guys make it possible. This video will be available on Patreon ad-free while ads will be running through the video on YouTube. Also, it's not just about the ads. On Patreon, you get to see extra videos that you never get to see on YouTube, as well as extended versions of the videos that hit YouTube. So it's definitely worth a look, and the community there is effervescent. Let's get to Cheap and Chic Moschino. Now, this one was released in 1995, one year after Franco Moschino's passing away. This is very sad. But I do hope that somehow he had something to do with this perfume, perhaps in the production stages of it, the development stages of it. Maybe he got to smell some version of it before it was released. I really hope he did. Uh, this batch here is from 2019. So it's relatively fresh. Also, what is important to say, this is one of those rare brands that has, Moschino being the brand, that has never changed their distribution or their perfume production house and that production house being Euro Italia. Euro Italia has been producing Moschino since day one. So this is really good to note because what does this mean? This means that this fragrance probably witnessed very little to no changes in its uh, formulation since 1995 to today. But we're going to see if that is true or not in a minute. Here's our little olive oil hiding inside of this huge package. This one is technically, I mean, this is the biggest size. It's the 100, oh, her head. I just chopped her head off. Uh, this one is available. <laughs> hey, let me see, what, what, what's the problem here? Oh, the problem is, interesting. You have to take the whole, th the whole inner box out in order to take Olivia or olive oil out of here. She's really, really packed in there. Look at this. We have to lift this up. Oh, there she is, but she's backwards because this is where the name of the fragrance is. Cheap and Chic Moschino. 100 ml, there should be a 50 ml and maybe even a 30 ml out there. But, now, uh, you could actually check the link under this video. I'm gonna add my affiliates link to Amazon. You could purchase this one depending which country you're in. But this one goes for really cheap on Amazon. So, I ordered mine there. You could do it too. But, only if you like this perfume. Be warned, you guys, this one is not to be blind purchased. Just putting it out there. It has a hell of a lot of character. Just like the background here is showing us, this one has a hell of a lot of character. Just, um, oh, there's so much to say. I'm so excited about this review. I love it. I love this perfume so much, by the way. And I love olive oil. And I love Robert Altman's Popeye movie, you should check it out. Shelley Duvall as olive oil. I mean, she nails it. And Robin Williams, may he rest in peace, is our beloved Popeye in that movie. Robert Altman being one of my favorite directors. Okay, back to uh, the Shelley Duvall version of olive oil in Moschino form. I do prefer the original concept art and uh, font and logo of the Cheap and Chic fragrance, which is this one. This is the original one from the 90s. They have kind of updated it to a um, more easily readable, I guess, uh, version, but it's just not even close to how elegant this was. And this font in particular explains to us much clearly or much more clear than this font does, what does cheap and chic actually mean? Now, I have encountered some people asking me, well, why is it cheap? It has nothing to do with cheap. You have to understand, let's quickly have a look here at the background of, of the fun, of the playfulness that Franco Moschino used to do. 13, which is a number for misfortune, he would play with that and he would like use it and say like, come on. Superstition, 
move it away. Moschino, in Italian, schifo means yucky or gooey or gross. So he played with the word of moschino and schifo, like mo gross. <laughs> Give me something that's mo gross. But he would push these concepts of what is bad taste and transform them into luxury. Hence, that's why also the question mark is one of his biggest symbols and logos. He loved to use that because he would question everything. So when he says cheap and chic, he doesn't mean that something is cheaply or poorly done. He says that there is a taste in bad taste, if you know how to do it. Just like John Waters would say, another one of my favorite movie directors of all time, John Waters teaches us very clearly how good bad taste can be if you know how to do it, because it's connected, intrinsically connected to pop culture and to a deep and rooted knowledge of history and style and design development throughout history. So only if you can harness that knowledge can you allow yourself to say cheap and chic, just like Stanley Kubrick in The Space Odyssey, you know, using the music that he used, the soundtrack, the score to a space, 2001 A Space Odyssey, Also Sprach Zaratustra, all of that stuff is the Blue Danube. It's impossible if you, you cannot use music so powerful if you don't have the visuals and the savoir faire that go along with it. Otherwise, it's just cringy. Franco harnessed that power and that knowledge. So he could allow himself to play with these names and terminologies, cheap and chic. So next time you encounter cheap and chic, the fragrance, remember this. Remember the fact that it's not about something being cheap. It could cost, not. it doesn't have to cost much to be chic and that's the idea behind it as well we are bombarded by brand marketing telling us that only if it costs a lot is it worth something that is so not true and you have to challenge that notion over and over and over again and you have to combat it fight it back and you know also talk to your sales associates talk to the brands make it very clear to them that you're not falling for that that's a ploy that's a trap that they're trying to trigger onto you Franco was very honest in that respect. He was very playful and he understood the power of demasking the truth, really, behind brand marketing, behind all the ploys all the brands are using, and also corporate uses in general, not just for fashion, you guys. But, uh, let's talk about computers. Same applies there. We're not going to mention any brands, but you know who I'm talking about. Okay. So... By the way, olive oil's head. So this is this is how she stands. Actually, let me just put her here and blend in there for a second. The uh, kind of ad shot of the new bottle of uh, olive oil. So you could see that they kind of put her to the back side because it's as if she's turning to the back. She's looking backwards, and this is the back of her head with her cute little chignon in the back. It's adorable, and then she has transformed into a heart. For the occasion, she has her little collar, which she always has. That's olive oil. These, these are the colors of her dress. And this is also one of the reasons why Jean-Paul Gaultier, when he released his uh, Popeye fragrance, or Le Mal for Popeye, or Popeye Le Mal Au Fraiche, he could not use olive oil as the counterpart, but instead Betty Boop was utilized as... Popeye's friend. Now, in the comic book here, they're not having a relationship. How can they? They're kind of just good friends. Or are they? Should Olive Oil be worried? Probably maybe a little bit. But Betty Boop has that innocence within her sexiness. Ah, but still, she's a bit more naughty than Olive Oil. Olive Oil is more determined, even though she's clumsy. While Betty Boop is more naive, but definitely more sexualized. This is a little tattoo sticker sheet that came out uh, when uh, Gautier released his uh, Popeye and Betty Boop fragrances, Le Mal and Classique. Okay, let's put them to the side. Let's spray olive oil. I'm going to spray her off camera because I don't want the silk scarf to get uh, stained. So, just repeating again, Euro Italia is still making this one. Very happy to hear that. Let's spray it on. Okay, I did three... There you go, three sprayers. Wow, it's so intense. Oh, okay. Hmm. And I have the little Eau de Toilette splash bottle, which you can also check out in uh, another special video that I made about my favorite bottles of all time, right up there in the card section, but also in the description box down below. 
Okay, let me open her. Let me do this off camera as well because she tends to leak a little bit. And I'm going to put her on the other arm here. And let's do this. Okay. It takes a bit because with the splash bottles it's super tricky. I'm going to close it now. Okay. So, granted, the eau de toilette, uh, just, let's just put this instead. I can't turn the eau de toilette on its belly because it might leak. So let's put the box of it instead. Um, so because this one is vintage, the top notes are a little bit off, but that's okay. It's still really beautiful, like five seconds into the fragrance and we're out. Mm, it's delicious. It's very smooth. While this one, it bites a little bit. I do sense a bit of, uh, let's just double check that it is Auto Italia still. Yeah, it is. Proof is in the pudding. Focus. And Euro Italia, there it is. Now, however, maybe because it's a relatively new batch, this one bites a bit more uh, than uh, this one does. This one is smoothier. It's a bit richer. I have to say there is a bit of a change in the way the fragrance smells. This one is uh, soapier and uh, more chemical. Yeah, we do have a change in the formulation. So let's read the ingredients that, by the way, the ingredients I'm getting for this one now are taken straight from the Euro Italia website. They do have their own website where they list all the brands that they collaborate with uh, for who they make fragrances. And of course, Moschino is listed there as well. So cheap and chic, uh, they tell us that uh, in the top notes, we have Calabrian Bergamot, Yuzu Essence, Petit Grand del Paraguay, so from Paraguay, rosewood from Brazil. Now the yuzu essence, the yuzu fruit, it looks like a like a lemony, like a lemon, but it it's like a little bit like in Italy there's a cedro, it's like um, which is not cedar. Oh god, it's really difficult to explain. Let's just say it bites more than the lemon would, and it has a darker, deeper, mm, more bitter than acidic note to it. The heart note is living nymphea. Now, by living, I guess it's a type of description they have to put in there because of the chemical version of the nymph flower that they're using, which looks like a lotus flower. Uh, peony, uh, the cyclamen or cyclamen, but uh, ciclamino in Italian. Now, the cyclamen is a very is my favorite flower. As those of you who follow me. No, the wild cyclamens are my favorite flowers of all time, especially the wild ones grow in the forests around September, October. Their smell is just amazing. And that's what is so special about this one, because the heart note is all about the cyclamen. And in the vintage version, it, it flows up to the surface and it's so clean and beautiful. So cyclamines or cyclamines are my favorite flowers, but in here we also have Jasmine from Egypt. Hi, Jasmine from Egypt. Egyptian Jasmine, I guess. It's an Italian website, so they're, they're kind of writing things in a wrong way. Then they have the Living Wild Rose. And again, under Living Wild Rose, I, I, I would presume it's a certain chemical component that's been copywritten or registered, trademarked somehow, so they have to call it that way. Then they got the Violet Flower, and in general, Water Flowers. The dry down, the dry down is also huge. Living vanilla, living white orchid, iris, tonka bean, vetiver, sandalwood, musk, and gray amber. So I guess because of all of these living additions, uh, that's what makes this one smell so different in the opening notes. And now that uh, some time has passed, and I do make a, a, I pause the video and I edit it from time to time because I want to allow the perfume to settle down. It in the beginning, they're so different. This one is so aggressive. This one is, in the beginning, already smooth. It's as if here we have the heart and bass notes coming through from the get-go, much smoother and elegant. This one is screechy and artificial in the opening notes. It's actually kind of bad. <laughs> so, so, I mean... Let's be honest about it. It's like you you spray it on and you go, what what is this bug repellent? Uh, that's how intense it is. But 
and here's the magique. Uh, I'm smelling it now. It's drying down to the original cheap and chic. So you gotta give it that moment. You gotta give it that time. It's also a fresh bottle. Maybe I need it. It needs some. I need to spray it a couple of times for the oxygen to kind of mix with the juice, and it's gonna tone down for sure in a year or or two. Even though here at the bottom, well, actually, it states it better on the packaging. Um, you see this little note there, 36 m open lid. This means like, so what they're telling you, and this is kind of the law in cosmetic industries nowadays. Uh, according to the products in the cos in the, according to the ingredients within the product, you get different uh, dates. But this means after you've opened the perfume. It's fresh for 36 months, if you store it properly, obviously, not in too hot weather or blah, blah, blah. Okay, so as you can see, there's a lot of ingredients in here. It is a 90s powerhouse fragrance, but not powerhouse as we're used to from the 80s. It's not a Giorgio Beverly Hills. It's not Passion by Elizabeth Taylor. It's not Poison by Christian Dior. It is... It's... It's a Moschino, and it's a quintessential Moschino. It's not the first Moschino fragrance released, but it is definitely the most popular, most famous one. And I believe it should go back to this gorgeous gold uh, kind of written font. I'm not so sure. This could even be Franco's own handwriting, but not so sure about that since, as we said before, he passed away before the product was released. When this brand when this brand, when this perfume was launched, there was an entire bath and body uh, range launched with it, which is amazing. I only have a couple of pieces here with me, but you can see the beauty of it and how it, how masterfully it, it kind of works all together. So we have the beige. This is a off-white, but it's more beige color with gold. It's so beautiful, beige and gold, really. Franco learned from Chanel there because that's just a beautiful, beautiful blend. And then uh, the bath products. So the perfumes are black with gold, the hyper chic elegance. And then we have the bath products, which are beige with gold. We have the, the bubble of soap. Even the names are ironic. The milk of irony or the ironic milk or the irony milk. This is the, the body, the body uh, lotion. So, also when we're talking about the packaging, there's a reason why we have these colors. You know, gold is super elegant, very 90s, but this beige, which kind of borders to white with red mixed with the green, are actually the colors of the Italian flag, which, if we take all this away, you see it peeking out here a little bit. There you go. Moschino was obsessed also with the Italian flag, and uh, he used it a lot in his fashion and in the perfume bottle. So for people who are kind of, because a lot of people don't know, why is it green on the inside? It's the heart of Italy. That is the idea. The notion is that this, when you open it up, you, you kind of open up the Italian flag as well. You got the red, the white, and the green. Now you have your answer to that mystery as well. This is a little a bubble of soap. Now the soap is in my closet. It's, a, it's literally a, a ball. But look how beautiful they would give you these really thick paper napkins with the, it's not just, uh, it's kind of pressed into the soap. It's gold, it's oxidized a little bit, but it says cheap and chic Moschino. And then you have the bottom part as well. And then you got the little soap tray inside so that the water can leak out of it once you've used it. So this is just it's so much attention to detail. You can forget this attention to detail nowadays. No brand is investing that much money nowadays. And then the Milk of Irony. Again, the Italian flag. We're opening it to the green. And inside we got a pumper. And then pump, pumper, pump. And look how beautiful this bottle is and how elegant the writing is on it. This is just freaking museum worthy, honestly. And when they're standing next to each other, uh, the, this is 200 ml. And the perfume is 100 ml. Just so beautiful. So imagine this font here on the bottle. Anyway, that's an idea for you, Moschino. Go back to the original, just saying. Or Jeremy Scott, who's now the creative director of Moschino. Why don't you go there? 
let's put the original font for a second here. Now, the what else is amazing are all of the ad campaigns that Moschino had in the past. And in particular, the first video that was launched to promote Cheap and Chic by Moschino. I'm going to show you a little snippet to the side here of uh, olive oil arriving into this big room. And uh, Popeye is allegedly dead. He's in this glass coffin. And she, when she sees him, she goes nuts. She screams and smashes the coffin and the glass is everywhere. And then she pulls out and finds, well, finds and pulls out a bottle of cheap and chic Moschino, the new fragrance, sprays herself with it, comes close to Popeye, and he comes back to life. And they hug and that's the end. And it's so beautiful. This commercial is so beautiful, but it's so sad because... It reminds me of, of Franco's passing, you know? It's as if Franco is that Popeye and he's laying there in that coffin. And it's kind of wishful thinking to, to bring him back to life because this was the ad campaign that came out after his passing. So it's a very symbolic commercial. It always makes me sad to see it, but I love it so much. And I do wish that uh, somebody out there could give me a high-res version of this video because I, I can only find the, the low-res version of it. Cheap and chic is fun. It's playful. Uh, I'm smelling it now again. Let's see how the dry down is kicking in. The more we wait and the more we're back in the 90s version of it. And really, and we are in, in the 90s now. Uh, it's so good. So my verdict is a yes, buy it. You could follow the link under this video through my affiliates. Um, Amazon link to to get the, the fragrance but also in some perfumers you could still get it in the three sizes test it out first you're gonna hate it in the first couple of minutes you will it's just that that much of a bug repellent but then later on that cyclamine kicks in and it's just it floats in the air it's a it's a breezy 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 easy breezy this one is unfocused, is it? Okay, let's do it like that. It's an easy, breezy, beautiful experience. You know, olive oil. Envision olive oil at her best. Looking for Popeye. <laughs> Everywhere she goes, it's all about olive oil and Popeye. And I'm trying to figure out about the gray amber and the musk and the sandalwood. You know, if anything, from the bottom notes, it's about the vetiver. The vetiver in here freshes up the entire kind of spectrum of, of everything we've seen from the bottom to, to the top or to from the top to the bottom, either way you want it, because this one goes like this or like that. Uh, but it stays quite linear throughout its progression. What, what it does do, so it's not like you're going to start sensing out each ingredient on its own. It's that masterfully blended still today for 2019. And I'm smelling it again just to be sure again. Yeah, it's a bit more powdery than it used to be in the 90s, which I'm totally fine with because I love a bit of violet and uh, a, a kind of a notion of a powder. And I, and, and I love iris. And iris is in the, in the base notes here. So if you put iris in the base notes, you best believe that it's going to be more powdery than if you put iris, let's say, in the top notes or in the mid notes. It's just, it's more rooted at the at the core of the fragrance. So that powder is going to start trickling through to the surface, but it's going to be a very determined powder. Mixed with the cyclamine, mixed with the violets, it's just that gorgeous, really. And the more you wait, and the more it warms up on your skin, and the more playful it's going to get, and the more energetic it's going to get, and the more fun it's going to smell. That's the whole concept of Cheap and Chic. You're supposed to... I guess, begin with a little bit of a cheapness to it, but then it becomes so chic and effervescent the more it goes on. I'm telling you guys, this is one of the loves of my life. <laughs> Moschino, cheap and chic. And in fact, I have these vintage pieces in, in the Fashion Bunker archive because I consider them to be extreme treasures of design history, of perfume history. Just, you know, we've lost this art. We have. There's no more like such attention to detail when it comes to creating all these pieces you can forget it like it ain't happening you know what i mean this ain't happening anymore it happened once and i don't know if we're gonna go ever back to the 90s and if we're ever gonna go back to a time when 
I guess when brands would invest more, would believe more in themselves, would play it less safe. That's what I'm saying at the end of the day. And, you know, now with all the crisis that we're going through and with all these strange viral situations we're, we're in, you know, God knows we really need somebody to take a risk because we're playing it so safe. The world has become so clinical and aseptic that we've lost our lust to live. There's, you know, we live. Yeah, because you got to live. You know, that's part of your instinct of survival. But the lust to live is gone. But I'm not letting it die. I'm keeping, I'm fighting my fight. This channel in particular preserves that lust for beautiful objects, the desire to just embellish our lives. Each and every one of these videos, for me, is like adding another accessory, like another jewel to this chain or this beautiful collar that we have, which, which we adorn ourselves with, which we call life. That's basically what this is. That's what I do. That's the passion that I have for these products and for these videos. And it's a lot of work to make these videos. It's a lot of work to do a review of a perfume, to create the background, to edit it, to, to, to smell them, to live with them, to feel the story that they deliver. You need lust for life in order to make videos like this. So as long as I'm alive, I'll keep fighting and I'll never give up on love. I hope you like this video, guys. It's a hopeful one. If you have, please do thumb it up and let me know what you think about olive oil in her cheap and chic Moschino rendition from 1995 in the comment section down below. Don't forget to subscribe to my channel on Instagram. Well, I'm doing my channel here, but I'm also on Instagram, Facebook, Twitter, and Patreon. Super Deco Ball spelled together. Never forget to never give up on love. Love you. I'll see you soon. Take care. Bye.